Hello friends, welcome back. In the previous video, we have seen how we can create the DME structure or DME tree with the help of the standard one provided by the SAP. So in this video, we will see how we can create our own DME tree from the scratch. So before we start creating the DME structure, I want to walk you through some basic information about the DME structure. So what are the fields we have been given and those fields are maintained under the tabs. So I'll just walk you through quickly when we'll start creating those nodes. So we'll discuss those fields in detail. So let's go to the standard one. So I'll run here the transition code DMEE. And since we have not created any one, so here I'm going to pick the standard one. And here, if you just go to the change option, then you will observe system is going to give you this structure below. If I go with the display option, so for example, I'm trying to open any DEB tree and I click on the display option, then that structure system is not going to show you. So in, in those structure like FAPH, FAPHX and P, so what are the fields you have? So if you want to see them, then you can click on, you can go with the change option. And here, these are the structures and under these structures, we have been given the field. So you can go through these field. Now we can go back. And once again here on this screen, so this is the option we have already explored. This is for the copy. If you want to remove any of your DME tree in the system, and this is to test your DME version. So if you have any version, you want to check what are the fields the system is going to populate. So we can click on the test option. So since this testing is not going to give you the correct or 100% output because it may happen that the system is going to show you these fields, but when you are going to do the unit testing, so for some of the field, you may not getting the values because of some condition we have for some of the nodes. So that is the reason output is not coming. So the best way to test your DME structure, it is through the F110 only. So we'll just come out of here. And now we can go to the change option. So we are aware about this screen. So on the left side, we have been given the nodes. If you want to open all the nodes, expand all. On the right side, we have been given the different, different tabs. And in these tabs, we have been given the fields. Then below that we have this structure. So the first tab we have, it is the administrative data tab where the system is going to show us the information about our tree type. So by default, it is going to be PM because when we are creating any DME tree, so it is going to be PM for the automatic pin program. So here in this DME tree, the system is going to generate the output in the XML file. Then we can see the name of this tree. This is the ID. And then we can just see here the documentation about this tree. So if you are testing on the test system, then this documentation is not mandatory. You can also keep it as blank. This is required for the technical reason. So if you want to apply some BAPI or if you want to apply some BI or some other technical information is required. So for that, we can maintain the documentation. But this is not mandatory. We can keep it as blank also. In that case, system is going to give you the warning message. Then we can just see here it is a standard version system is going to give you as one. And then we will have here the user ID with which this DME tree has been created. And also it is going to show you on the right side the user ID with which the last change in this DME tree has been made and what is the time. Then this is the information we have about the administrative data. Now, if you go to the next tab is format specific structure, it is to be maintained by the technical team. And if we want to use it standard, so we can use the standard one, which is FAPM underscore SEPA. So under this, what type of structure is maintained? So I'm going to show you. So we can go to the transaction code SC11 and we can have this structure over here. And let's see the field or component. So this is a structure and this is a description about it. This is for the SEPA payment format. And these are the field which we need to have in that uh, file, in the XML file. So we have the node as XML NS, then XSI, then schema allocation, and so on and so forth. And for these field and component, we have been given the length. We have also given the short description. So if we want to make some custom changes, in that case, we can involve the technical team. And the reference of that custom format specific structure, we can give it here. Then we have the next tab as level. 
so when we receive a sample file from the bank a sample file in which we need to provide the xml information or payment information to our bank so this is a sample file we have for the jp morgan bank and in this file we should have these notes so we need to also make sure under these notes the relevant information should be populated the relevant information should be populated so this is a sample file and in the sample file this kind of notes we need to create if we need to send a xml file to the bank so we can just see here it is the three page xml file in this we need to create multiple node now all these nodes which we will have in the xml file so it is divided into the three segments this information which we are sending to the bank so that has been divided by three section so the first section is going to be your header section first is your header section and this header section we call it as level one we call it level one whereas in the level two we will have the payment detail will have the payment information detail so under which batch we are processing it so if we are doing the check payment or the transfer payment or wire payment and how much total payment we are processing then what are the set of vendors then what are their address bank detail all that information we will be having under the payment detail so here we are saying that the level one information it is going to be mostly it is going to be static so this information we will be having this information we want to populate only for the one time and that is the reason here for the level one we are just saying that the reputation is going to be only for the one time the reputation factor for this it is going to be for the one time mostly we maintain the reputation factor as one then for the payment detail we will be maintaining the reputation factor as 999 because here we want to repeat the information for the different different kinds of payment we are processing if it is going to be the wire payment or the transfer payment or we are doing that payment in the multiple currency so in that case system is going to generate that information in the multiple line item and that is the reason here the reputation factor is going to be 999 then the third section is going to be your trailer detail trailer means your conclusion so trailer detail is going to be a footer detail so how much total payment and number of payment you are sending to the bank so that information we can maintain here under the level three so this kind of three level information you will be having in your xml file as well as in your flat file so here we are just checking the xml file okay so i hope this level one two and three is clear to you and why we use this reputation vector then so the next tab we have it is a sort slash key field so in our DME tree, we will be maintaining the information for our paying company code, for our bank, for our pay payment reference uh, document. So this kind of fields, we want to have it in our DME format and these fields which we are doing. So for these fields, we need to maintain the information that, okay. So for example, here we have the company code information, paying company code. So this paying company code information, where we want to maintain it, so we are just saying that it is going to maintain only for the one time at the header detail. So under the header detail, it will be maintained only for the one time. Whereas in the level two, which is the payment detail. So we will be maintaining the different different bank detail if we are processing the payment from the different different bank. So in that case, we are just saying that the bank information would be there. And here the reference information, payment reference information will be having in the trailer. So this is a level one, two, three. Again, we have maintained for these key field and these key field on the left side, we need to select these check boxes. Then system has also given us the option for these field. If you want to do the sorting in your XML file or not, if you want to do the sorting, then in that case, you can deselect these check boxes. So if you don't want to do the sorting for your fields under the structure, then in that case, you can select this no sorting checkbox. So here, this is a standard structure we are using and it is a FAPH under which we have these fields. Then the last tab we have is the file data. So in this file data in your XML file, if you want to use a special character or if you don't want to use a special character, if you want to use it, then you can specify which kind of special character you want to use. And if you don't want to use it, 
then in that case also we can specify that okay these are special character we don't want to use so according we can select the radio button do not allow or allow so this was a brief information i just want to give you before we start creating the dm structure like here we have the document node we have the group header message id so for these nodes what type of information we need to maintain so that i'm going to cover it in this video so let's start so we can go back. So let's start creating the DM tree from the scratch. Again, transaction code, it is a DM double E. Go back and we can give here the DM tree name. So let's have here the name as forward slash. And we can give the name as it is a JP Morgan underscore DM. Then we have this create button. We can click on the create button. So system is going to ask you, do you want to generate the output in the XML format or in the flat file? So if you want this output to be generated in the XML format, so we can click on the XML file option. Then by default system is going to give you the screen. And with this screen, you will be having the first line item. So in our XML file, so this type of information system is going to give you default only with this information DME tree okay now here once again we have the under the administrative tab we have been given the tree type then we can also see the name of our format tree and here on the left side we don't have any notes so those notes will create later first let's give the information about the about the DME tree so this is the JP Morgan JP Morgan bank dme tree format or format tree format tree and as i just shared with you if you want to maintain the documentation you can do it otherwise you can keep it as blank and then we can go to the next tab format attribute so format attribute as i just shared with you sap has already given us a standard format structure so we can give the reference of that if you want to use a custom one, then you can involve the technical team and get the custom format specific tree structure created and you can give the reference of that structure over here. So I'm going to use here the standard one. So this we have already seen in the SE level and when we are going to maintain the DM tree. So in that you can just see here we have nodes with the name XML exercise. So these we need to maintain and this structure we will be using for that reason. Then we can go to the level, click on the level. And here we can maintain the level as again, one, two, three. So here for the first level, we are going to maintain the repetition factor as one. Whereas for the other two level, we have the level two and three. We'll be maintaining the repetition factor as nine, 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 enter. Then in the sort slash key field, we can maintain the fields so here i have already maintained a excel file i'll also share with you so here i am going to give the reference of these fields so i'm going to take these four fields one is the paying company code and then we have the due date of the paid entry house bank and reference to the payment document so let's have here the structure it is going to be same it is the first one f p h which is the standard one so here I'm going to copy first the structure and the sequence number you can just see the sequence number will be maintained by the system automatically. We don't need to maintain it manually. So here we can maintain the fields and then we can also give their level. So let's have here the level one for the company code, whereas for the next two, we have the level two and the last one we could have the level three. We can press enter button. And then we can go on the left side. So we can just see here, we have been given the sequence ID or sequence number. And any, and here we can select these fields as key fields. Then after this, for any of the field, you want to do the sorting. So here, no sorting we want to have for the, these two fields. So it is the AU FD and second is a doc IR. Then file data. So here any special character you want to allow. So here let's have here the special character. 
in the file and then we can if you don't want to allow you can click on the do not allow option and then we can save it click on the save option click on the save data press enter button and then we can go back here it is saying that we want to save it yes and also we need to activate it so we can go to the change option here we need to first we need to check the inconsistency check so here this is the button to check the inconsistency check after that we can activate it so let's first check it so it is saying that in this dme structure which we are creating this jp morgan underscore dme it doesn't have any nodes so that is fine so this we are going to create it so here you can just see this log has been given for this reason only so now we'll start creating the nodes so if i just show you the nodes we have in the sample file it starts with the document then under this we have the other nodes also so when we will start creating the nodes so we have the different different types of nodes and to identify them to in order to identify them sap has also given the different different icon for them or legends so here we can go to the menu in the menu we have been given the extra option and under this extra we can click on this node legend so you can just see in the system you can create any node as a element and this kind of icon will be shown then for the xml attribute this kind of icon will be shown then for the technical node this is the icon and for the atom this is the icon and if you want to see the information for any of the node you want to delete it or you want to do some action on that then you can double click on this so this kind of blue arrow will come then if you want to use any node for the reference purpose so this we mostly use if in case we want to do the total number of uh, transaction we want to total and sum of uh, those transaction we want to have so we will make a use of the aggregation so if you want to do the aggregation in that case we use this reference id and then we also have this reference id to the another field so this is again we use for the total file so we'll see the example of each of these node and we will be also creating each of these node in our dme tree so if you want to see the basic information for each of these node so here on the right side we have been given the i button we can click on this i button so we can also get the basic information about the about this node so what is this element now if we need to create this kind of node okay so this round shape icon then how i will be able to create it so here you can just see this is the option we have been given for the node creation so if you keep the cursor on this tree property and at this tree property only you can create the the element so here we can create we can create the element under this tree property and here we need to give the name on the right side so this is the pan we can just adjust on the left and at below also we can just adjust this pan you can just see we have been given the mapping procedure we'll talk about this mapping procedure so when we are creating any of the element node so these kind of tabs will be given and the first is your attribute tab then we have the source tab then we have the aggregation condition and we have the command so in the attribute we need to give the information in the field like the what is the name of that particular node or field and while giving the information for your node in the first field it should not have any gap it should not have any space then after that what kind of field we need to maintain so for example this is the file sent by the bank and this kind of nodes we need to create so for example you can just see message id so we need to have here the message id same as mentioned here then we have the number of transactions sum of those transaction initiating party so these kind of nodes we need to create it here on the first tab which is the attribute then after that any node you want to main, any node you want to maintain as a reference id so that reference id we just talked about it is for the calculation or for the counting of the transaction that is used for the aggregation then after that we have the length of that particular field or node how much space it is going to cover in the xml file 
so that we can maintain here. Then after that, if it is going to carry the information in the character or it is going to maintain the information in numeric or it is going to maintain the information in currency, we can here select the option type. Then the conversion function we have been given. So for example, this is the date format we want to have. Okay. So SAP has already given us the this conversion function for which kind of information. So for in case we want to maintain the date information or we want to maintain the currency information or any kind of character we want to maintain. So that kind of information we can maintain with the help of this conversion function. So for example, here you can just see we can maintain the date format as D0YYMMDD with no separator. Then you can just see here we have <clears throat> two figure also. Here we have YYDD and uh, we have also DDMYY and so on and so forth. This is a conversion function option we have been given the date. Same way you will be also getting the information for the conversion function of your time, currency and then character if you want to maintain on the left side right side and you don't want to have the leading zero so that kind of setting we can maintain under the conversion function after that we have been given the option about the level so this information this node is going to be maintained in the first level that is going to be your header or in the second level which would be part of your payment information or the third level which is going to be your trailer then here for each type of node you will be maintaining so here system is going to give you this mapping procedure so this is the mapping feature and these are the options we have been given so if you want to maintain any static information in that case we can select the first option as constant in case you want to maintain any dynamic information which we have in our transaction data or in our master data in that case we can give the information so in that case we can select the mapping feature as structure field so in the structure field, remember we have three structure, standard structure provided by the SAP. We have F, P, H, then HX and then P. So under those structure, what are the field we have? If you want to populate the information for those fields, so we can make the use of this structure field. Then after that, we have this aggregation. So aggregation mostly we use for the number of records we want to total and some of values we have for those transactions we want to total. So in that case, we make a use of this aggregation. So any kind of information which we are not able to populate under this constant structure or ag aggregation or any of the given node, then for that we need to make a user exit. In that case, we can select this mapping feature as exit module. And the reference of that exit module, we need to go to the next tab where I'll just show you. Then any node you want to create as a atom. So for example, you have the dynamic information. So for example, up to particular level, so will be that information system is going to populate as a wire payment and below that amount system is going to show us the information non wire payment. So that kind of information we can maintain with the help of this atom. Basically under the atom, we can maintain the condition. So if system is going to meet that condition, then is it is going to maintain the constant information or it is going to maintain the structure information. So we'll see the example of this also. Then no map mapping, it is clear. So here simply we are just creating a node. It is not going to give you any value. So this is the information we have about the first step attribute. Now go to the source. Mainly this source we will be using in case setting information, then you will be giving the reference of that in this constant field. If you are using the structure field, so in that case, we need to give the reference of the structure and the name of the field. So we'll mention here in case you are using any exit module. So the reference of that exit module, you can mention here. Then we have the next step as aggregation. This is for the total. So we have also example. So we'll see later. Then after this, we want to meet any condition. So in that case, we have these arguments. So we have the argument one, argument two. And in that case, if system is going to give us the information based on the constant value or on the source structure value, so that kind of condition we can also maintain. And the last have we have for the comment, any kind of comment you want to give it for any particular kind of node so that you can maintain here. So let's start with the first node. We have the document and for this document, what kind of information we need to maintain? 
so here it is saying that for the document we need to create this as a element and we need to give the information in the field called name so let's have it the name and this document should populate this like this okay it will not going to give you any value but it should populate like this document and after that we will have this xml in this node we will be maintaining the level this is going to be part of the first level first level of the xml file we will be sending and it has no mapping so this node will not have any mapping no mapping so by default system is going to give you the type of this node as character output will be coming with the character that's it so here i also mentioned the information we will be maintaining in the tabs like the aggregation condition command so these are going to be blank source is also going to be blank source So we can now save it, click on the save option, save data, enter. Then what next we need to do? So we need to now give the reference of this XML. You can just see in the sample file, we need to have this output. This is the static output. Okay. So this will not be changed. This is a static output we want to have. And we will be maintaining here two nodes. So first is going to be your XML NS and second is going to be your XML NS colon xsi so once again you can also go back to the sc11 and you want to see any detail about it you can check in that structure so here we are directly maintaining it so we can keep the cursor on the document right click and you can just see we have the option to either to create the element or attribute technical node or at all so here we will be creating this node as a attribute click on the option create attribute we need to give the name so let's have the name as so let's copy the information with the xml xsi xml xsi and for this xml xsi so we don't need to maintain any data so here it is going to be in the character this information by default in the character and under the mapping procedure we need to go down we need to create the atom Go to this option called own mapping at all and then we can save. Save it. Now we can right click. So keep the cursor on this XML and as XSI. Right click and select the option create at all. Give the name of the atom. So here we have the atom. So I'll also show you what is the atom. So here the information we are going to maintain it will be covered under the atom. So let's have here the atom and name we are given as ISO 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 the information we will be maintaining for this atom it will have the length of 70 character 70 character and here will be maintaining the constant information constant information what type of information we want to populate so this information of schema instance we want to populate so go to the source tab and here mapping page we will be selecting constant source and here we will be maintaining the static information so copy paste enter then for this iso at all we will be also maintaining a condition what is the condition so go to the condition tab we have here the argument one argument two in the argument one we are just saying that in the structure we have it is a fpm underscore sepa which we have also seen under the transaction code se 11 so we'll give the reference of that structure and this field xsi so here if it is saying that in the simple word it is coming as blank then system is going to pick the constant information and what is the constant information which we have copied this one this constant information schema instance okay. so this is going to be copied by the system in case it is blank in the source so here we are just going to this type called we will click on this field called type and we are just saying that if it is going to be if this argument source structure is going to be blank so here o means operator so operator will have here is equal to 
greater than less than so we'll have here the equal to if this field is going to be space means it is going to be blank in the source then system is going to pick the information from the constant we have maintained in the second tab called source and here again we need to maintain this option under the type select t f4 and we will select here the option number one one we'll select here the option number one so this kind of this kind of condition we will be maintaining and the reference of this condition i have also mentioned here in the excel sheet then the information will be maintaining for this node under the aggregation command it is going to be blank so we can save click on the save option then the same kind of node we will be maintaining under the xml and iso we will be also maintaining under it so i am going to copy this right click i'll copy and at the same level i'll have the one more and the name of this is only xml ns so for this node xml ns character own mapping we don't need to maintain the length it is going to be blank now we can save so this no this uh, atom we have already created we can also take the reference of it copy and paste under this xml ns which we have recently created insert it has come two times okay so let's remove one so this is the one which we have copied it is going to maintain the information with is only and it will have the length as 70 it will be maintaining with character output will be maintaining with character and here we will be having the information once again mapping to it is going to be constant so what type of information we want to maintain so we'll be maintaining here a different set of information it is going to be this one urn iso pane 113 so this information will be shared by the bank so it is iso 20022 pane 113 so we can simply copy paste that information here and again we can go to the condition earlier we have given the reference of the, this exercise now we will be giving the reference of the xml ns so here in this condition, we are just saying that in the standard structure, if we don't have this XML NS, then system should give the information from where, from the source and take this information. So that is the condition we have maintained here. It should not be blank in the simple language. Now we are going to save it, click on the save option. So these are the nodes we have maintained. So if you want to see the output till this step, then what we can do, we can activate it. And before the activation, we'll see if we have any inconsistency result. So first we can click on the format recheck. So it is saying that no inconsistency. Fine. Let's activate, save and attach it. So this is the format tree we have. Before we use in the automatic pen program, we need to go to the payment medium format. Payment medium format transaction code is OBPM. And we need to maintain this DME tree over there also. So we can just go to the OBPM one and we can click on the new entry button. So whatever the ID you have maintained for your DME tree format, same ID we need to maintain for the payment medium format. So it is going to determine your DME tree automatically. So that system should determine your DME tree automatically. The name of the format, same as my DME tree format then here we can have a different description so this is the payment medium format for jpmc jpmc jp morgan then we can select the second option payment medium without document and here output we want to generate in the xml if you want this format to be country specific, in that case, you can select here the country ID. Otherwise, you can keep it as blank. So let it be country ID as US. Then you can give the reference of your structure. 
for the format parameter remember that fpm underscore sepa so here we can give the reference of that and after that we can select this checkbox mapping using the dme engine so select mapping using dm engine enter and system going to give you a button here for the dm engine click on this and you will see here you should have the you should have here your format tree you can also display it let's have here the active version so this is the dme tree we have now we can go back go back and we can go down so here it is saying that the file xml file you want to generate so it would be at a company code and house bank level or it would be a combination of your company code house bank and payment method so let's have here the first two options we'll select so if you want to generate the xml file so company code wise and house bank wise the file should be created by a system so for this reason i'm going to select both of these two check boxes so we can just save it click on the save option enter and the information under these different different folder it will be maintained so the information for the first folder event module for the payment medium format it will be maintained by the system automatically so this is the default information so after this we can go back so this is the obpm1 detail we have maintained now we need to go to the obpm4 go to the transaction code obpm4 we need to also create a variant of this but before we create the variant we need to make a use of this format in our automatic bid program then we will be able to go to the obpm4 and create the variant so let's have here the transaction code fbzp and here we can go to the automatic bid program payment method i am already using a company code in that i have already maintained the payment method so the country is us payment method is e this is for the dme payment method so we can double click on this and i'm going to attach the format which we have created today so it is going to be just press f4 key f4 key so it is going to be this one jp morgan forward slash jp morgan underscore dm so this is the one we have created and we can save click on the save option enter and here you can just see on your right side you have the format in the company code so you can click on this and here we have a combination of company code payment method and house bank so here also we need to attach the payment medium format as jp morgan press f4 and attach so this one we want to select enter save enter go on the left side we have the no to pay information so select this format go to the no to pay so we are going to select here the standard no to pay information given by the sap so here the different different samples have been given if you want to make the changes in the no to pay information then again we can make we can take the help of the technical team and we can customize that information but for the time being we are using here the sample information and we can just save it and do go back so we can go back go back so this is the information we have maintained in the automatic pin program now we need to go to the obbm4 obbm4 and this is the jp morgan format we have with us so we can double click on this and we need to create the variant so this is our company code and house bank so here we need to give the name so let's have here the name is double to double eight and it is the jpmc jpmc and then we can click on this for the variant information click on the yes option we want to create it and we can select here the all selection screen enter here we can give the once again reference of our format we have created press f4 key payment medium format this one jp morgan and we can under the print control remove this checkbox for the error log and we can give the reference of our printer under the print parameter 
आउटपुट डिवाइस इज गोइंग टू बी एल पी लोकल प्रिंटर जीरो वन एल पी जीरो देन इफ यू वॉन्ट द आउटपुट टू बी जनरेटेड इन योर एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट द आउटपुट फाइल टू बी जनरेटेड एंड स्टोर्ड इन योर ए एल इलेवन ड्राइव सो इन दैट केस यू कैन सेलेक्ट दिस चेक बॉक्स आउटपुट टू द फाइल सिस्टम आउटपुट टू द फाइल सिस्टम सो बाई डिफॉल्ट सिस्टम इज गोइंग टू बाई डिफॉल्ट सिस्टम इज गोइंग टू जनरेट एंड स्टोर योर फाइल इन योर ए एल इलेवन ड्राइव सो नाउ वी नीड टू गो टू द एट्रीब्यूट बटन क्लिक ऑन द एट्रीब्यूट एंड वी नीड टू गिव द फुल नेम डिस्क्रिप्शन अबाउट दिस वेरियंट सो लेट्स हैव द वेरियंट इट इज फॉर द जे पी मॉर्गन बैंक पेमेंट मैथड इज पी एम पेमेंट मैथड इज ई सेव इट क्लिक ऑन द सेव ऑप्शन गो बैक एंड वंस अगेन वी नीड टू हेयर सेव द इंफॉर्मेशन क्लिक ऑन द सेव ऑप्शन so we should have this information data has been saved now we can come out of here so we have one more transaction code obpm5 actually this is used if you want to send your automatic payment program information to the to the fscm or to the bank communication manager so here we are not using the bcm so in that case we will not be using this obpm5 but what we can make sure so here we have the first option called apr payment so we can click on this and we can make sure here we should not have any asterisk sign so under this identify we should not have here the star or asterisk sign and this check box should not be ticked if it is so then you can remove it because with this what will happen if you create your payment on then system is going to give you the message that it is intended for the cross payment media so in that case you will not be able to generate the payment media file so here we can just come out of here it is fine now where we need to go so now we need to do the testing and for the testing we need to have the open item for our vendor so here i have already couple of vendors in our com in my company code i have two vendors and for these two vendor we have the open item as well in the company code double to double it go to the execute button open item we have the open item of 136000 this is for the first vendor and for the second we have open item of 26000 so for this we will be doing the testing and for the testing we can go to the transaction code f110 so here i have already executed one test case i'll just remove it and create it from the scratch so let's have here the data as 9 and we have here the test id 1 we can go to the parameter we can give here the company code id payment method information next payment date and here we can have the vendor information i am giving here the vendor number in from 400 300 then we can go to the addition log select the check boxes for the due date payment method line item display again for the vendor range 300 to 400 305 and save now we can go back to the status tab create the proposal generate select this option called create payment medium enter now we can see if the proposal in the proposal if the dm file has been generated so since it is a test system so i am using the test system on that uh, this file system is saying that under the standard drive in the l11 so because of space constraint it is not going to save it so i am going to make the changes in my variant where i am saying that okay file should not get saved go to the obpm4 and we can go to the jp morgan and here we can go to the variant we can for the time being we can just remove this option called output to the file system save now we can go back and regenerate that proposal once again again we need to select this option called payment medium payment medium and then enter now once again we can see the log and at the end we should have here the message that the dme has been generated you can go to the 
menu environment so we can go to the menu environment and we can display it administration dme administration so here we have a total payment of 162000 and this is the first case we can see the content click you can just see system has picked our format which is jp morgan dme now we can see the content dme content so you can just see we are able to generate the first two nodes so first is the this is the standard one and we have the document and along with the document we also have the xml ns and xml ns xsi if you just match it with the sample one provided by the bank so here we have xml so here we have xml then we have pain id 113 and after that we have xsi id it is schema instance so here is schema instance We are able to generate the file and these are the nodes we have. Likewise, we'll be creating the further nodes.